my name is Luke. Primary background is, is a sort of Olympic level uh, endurance sport. Dr. Sellers and I have, have created uh, a device that is designed to help our athletes waste less time during training. About 70% of, of certainly high performing athletes um, are limited in their performance because of their respiratory system for various reasons and we needed a way of, of training this. Now strength athletes I find understand this concept pretty easily. You have a, a, a lunge problem or a overhead press problem, you do more of that. An endurance sport that's a novel concept for some reason, they think that just running more up the hill is going to make your lungs stronger and that's comes at the expense of the the recovery of the rest of the system and so what we've done with this is allow us to identify the muscles around your respiratory system and train them specifically so we're wasting less time um, doing peripheral work and more time doing focused work so that's the, that's the, the why of why we made this device in the first place hoping to do for you today is give you a few tools that are going to uh, uh, help leverage some knowledge as to how you can um, uh, inject this uh, tool into your everyday training um, because understanding how and why it should fit into certain uh, 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 training sessions or modalities uh, is, is a huge piece of the buy-in and understanding the benefit that it's going to give you, you know, at the games. So I'm Andrew. Uh, I live near Luke in the beautiful Okanagan Valley in British Columbia, Canada, on the west coast of Canada. Um, same, same location as the Cast. We've been training for about 10 years. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do, tell, us, tell me your name. Uh, and so that I get to know you a little bit, I would like to hear one thing that you're proud of internally. So I think, and then I came to sports, um, I did boxing as well, and my uh, boxing teacher always said, if you don't breathe, you will defeat yourself. And that was the first point I came to breathing, I think, so, um, yeah. That's, that's that's How long ago was that? That was, I was like 12, I'm okay. 29 now, so. Kavunjak from Serbia, I'm 24 years old. Uh, I am so proud to be here uh, in these sports uh, with uh, this high level because I am over 10 years in this sport uh, but I am the full worker, not full-time athlete. I'm um, slightly older than Luca. Um, <laughs> 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 kind of proud because last year was to be my retirement year. Um, I got injured and here we are. Um, sort of come back fairly strong um, in the quarterfinals. Was proud to uh, place fifth in Europe after such a big injury and potential career ending injury. So um, proud to not have given up. So I'm Jacqueline from Norway, uh, and I think I'm proud of uh, like betting on myself and daring to like take the opportunities ar uh, arise. It's like actually you know making the choice of you know quitting work and leaving my safe life home in Norway to kind of try to pursue this. Uh, so I think that's just like, there's, there's lots of things to be proud of, but that would be one of the things that Very actually good. kind Great. of dare to take. A bit of a leap, I would say. It's Erika from Sweden. Um, and I think right now it's uh, getting back from my injury and back to competition and uh, managed to like get the placement to qualify for semi in, in such a short time uh, after the injury. So, so uh, it's super simple. There's three pieces in your box. There's a bag, there's a mouthpiece, and there's a black piece that goes in between the two. So uh, the bag goes on the round end of the black one. It's just the mouthpiece sort of straight. It should go all the way in. Yeah. It doesn't have to go all the way in. It just That's has to enough. Get up to sort of the second knuckle. Yep. Like a little. Like a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just okay. Where's Matt? Uh, oh, yeah, what we're going to start with is just the basic five minute warm up. This is exactly what uh, Alexis Rapidus was doing for the games last year um, and got caught by the paparazzi, and we had to answer a whole bunch of questions on Reddit. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, so it's, it's very simple. Uh, uh, think about it in terms of your 
uh, range of motion and mobilizing that range of motion, right? This is the easiest place for people to sort of like get a bit of a sense of, of how this can help you in a short period of time. Everybody gets the idea of, 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 of any sort of range of motion stretching and how that can change the outcome of events. We can do the same thing with our respiratory system. The lungs have no structure to them, they're just a sponge. There's like an air-filled sponge. So all of the motion comes from the muscles around and in the rib cage and the diaphragm. And so the biggest contributor to volume of lung space is diaphragm. So it's a dome-shaped muscle and when you contract it, it flattens out, pushes your belly out because it fills the abdominal space. So when you breathe in, you'll see your belly going out because the diaphragm's flattening into it. When you relax that diaphragm, it falls back out. The intercostal muscles that crisscross between all the ribs, they help with contraction and the internal ones actually help contract down. The external ones help open up. And so when Luke's talking about range of motion, he's talking about the range of motion of the ribs moving on attached to the spine to open up. And he's talking about range of motion of the diaphragm to flatten out. Yeah. And that gives you volume. If everybody can just like take their arm and just support it in a rested pattern like this, all right, so everybody can, can extend their arm to full range this way and rest. Spend no energy, right? And then take it and close that range of motion to its maximum, and now you can rest it here. Your lungs don't do that, they rest in the middle. So it takes energy for us to inflate, and it comes back to neutral. To deflation, back to neutral. So this is the difference between the range of motion between some of the, the, the joints that you're used to and what we're working today. So think about that in terms of your range of motion as we're warming up. Find that end range to stretch and open up bigger lungs. And then as you're squeezing, don't just go to neutral, go beyond neutral and squeeze out with your abs and intercostal muscles to squeeze extra volume out. Squeeze out, good. Keep shoulders down, breathe in into here. Stay down. Your belly there. Squeeze your belly button to the spine on the exhale. Use the diaphragm. Keep yeah. up the Push the belly out. So the most air goes into the diaphragm. So we try and eliminate shoulders from working so they can use their muscles of the shoulders to do the exercises and they use their diaphragm to do the breathing. So okay. we separate this motion from the breathing motion. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Slowly speeding up. Left. As the pace gets faster, you're going to almost feel like you want to shorten your breaths. And I want you to, to hold yourself to the goal of maintaining as big of volumes as you can. Push, 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 push. Push, 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 push. Five seconds left, finish it off. Full breaths. Good. And rest. Nice work. How many people are, are sweating a little bit? Get a little bit warmed up. So like I'm warm up. Awesome. Yeah, right. job. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, now I'm 90, 90 again at 80. Yeah. 70, Can you come down? Yeah. What was your heart rate? Uh, it's saying 76. <laughs> My one up to one up one of six. One of six? Yeah. Anybody else? One zero three. What's that? One zero three. One zero three, right? So up over a hundred, not unusual for a five minute warm up. So much higher than your resting heart rate while you were just sitting there. How many people felt that that was a physical challenge? A little bit. You were I saw you working really hard. Everybody else kind of not too bad? Did it feel hard? I, I got dizzy in the beginning, but then I it got over. You got dizzy? Yeah. So I think that was like a CO2 tolerance. Yes. And then it went Keep, away? And then it went away. Okay, excellent. Other feelings? Last minute was harder. 
What's that? For me, last minute was The last harder. minute was hard. Me. Harder, I yes. I feel muscles. Uh, Did you feel the muscles yeah. working? Yeah. Okay, good, okay. Sometimes in the end, I feel like I have to cough. You had to feel like you had to cough? Yeah. 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 I heard some people, it sounded almost like a wheeze, like a <laughs> yeah, like I said, like I feel inhaling yeah. very good and strong, but on our exhaling, I didn't feel that strong. Yeah. So uh, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and asthma are restrictions of the ability to breathe out. And so in asthmatics and people with exercise-induced mm -hmm. asthma, you'll hear them wheezing. <sighs> this tightening of the airways. They can typically breathe in really well, but it takes them longer to breathe out because they can't. Their, their airways are small and they get restrictions and so it gets tight. And some people develop that with high speed breathing, which is why they get, it, they get diagnosed with exercise induced asthma. And it's just fast breathing and it causes irritation and it makes them feel like they're short of breath. So the doctor's diagnosis is exercise induced asthma. It's not asthma, it's just a, a bad breathing pattern. And you can overcome that by learning how to breathe smoother so you're not forcing air, which causes turbulence. And it's one of the benefits of nasal breathing is it smooths out the airflow. So we don't have a nasal breathing with this with you today. We actually have a mask version so you can actually do the same breathing patterns with your, through your nose. You know, how this is really beneficial for CrossFit in particular is certainly during competition and big competition, it's, it's that challenge to properly warm up the system without fatiguing the system. And so, you know, uh, a, a good proxy uh, from one of my athletes who's a, a, a very high level mountain biker. Um, normally to properly warm up to, you know, win a World Cup, it's, you know, a good 45 to even a 90 minute long warm up process of like getting the legs rolling, getting the heart going, getting the body temp up, getting the respiratory system firing. Incorporating something like this can condense that process. So instead of you spending all of this time driving metabolic demand to the point where you have to breathe hard because of that metabolic demand, we can just warm up the respiratory muscles first. And we get the respiratory muscles warmed up and out of the way. And so then you can focus on technical warm ups, right? So you're doing your movement patterns well. And so for this particular athlete, it's, it's, it's the handling of his bike, the getting off the line, the cadence, the smooth pedaling. That's the type of, of, of warm up he's then focused on. And this is absolutely relevant for CrossFit because it's so skill based in, in a lot of cases. And so if we can help athletes, if you can warm up that system effectively before the competition without fatiguing the rest of your body, we're gonna have more to deliver on the start line, which ultimately wins events. So what we'll do is we'll do a step test Luke's gonna set it up starting at 20 breaths a minute, which is an easy rate. We'll do 30 seconds. We'll stop, we'll give you just a couple seconds just in, and then we're gonna crank it up to 25 breaths. Then we'll go to 30, then 35, so we'll do 30 second increments, but we'll give you a short little break in between. If anything doesn't feel right, stop. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to, as big a breath as you can, learn the big breaths at 20 breaths a minute, then try and hold those same volume of breaths even as we go up to 30, 40, 50, and then see how high you can get before you lose the coordination. Yes. So you, we have to start blowing air in before we start. Yeah, I feel the bit. It, it just, just makes, makes it a bit easier. Yeah, because yeah, like you, you don't start like yeah, taking yeah, a normal I, breath. Yeah. Like, if I, if I start with it empty, yeah. then I'll be like, right, if there's nothing yeah, in the bag. That's exactly what I do, is I just go like this. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you do just too quick yeah, and then I just you like, stop. I just put some air in there just to get some air and Yeah. Yes. yes. It, should you keep going or should you lower like? So, so what you've identified, if you've got to the wheeze part, it means that you have exceeded what your body is able to move smoothly in and out. 
So it's inefficient breathing and it's signaling that it's too much. You need to slow, you do need to slow it down and, and make a smoother pattern. Yeah, and if, so that's, if that's something that you, you see yourself doing in competition, you get to that point of wheezing, then it's, it's a clear, clearly identified like limiter in that performance modality. And so we can now specifically train that ability to go bigger. If you ever run into that in competition where you, you hear yourself wheezing, that you're between... So there's two things you need to do. One, one, the hardest thing to do is you need to slow your breathing down, but you'll be driving the high CO2 is trying to get it out and you won't. So you need to, so you need to blow out more and know that you can take a quick breath in, but just slow it down by breathing more out. So, and you do two breaths where it's a little bit bigger and a little bit extended, the feeling of panic will go away and you'll be able to breathe slower. If you're with a coach, and they're near you, they can actually help you. And they put their hands and they actually help with the exhalation. So as you breathe out with the wheeze and he just helps give you a little extension because you may just be so tired and so weak you're not actually able to get the breath out. And so if, you, if they put their hands on your ribs and squeeze, it will actually help you get the air out and then the next breath in will be easier. And they do that two or three times. This is what we do with kids with asthma when they come in, they're panicking and they're <laughs> take their <everything. sighs> And it only takes two or three breaths and they're back to breathing slower, so. It's like with anything, you know, you'd have to try it a bit to see if, you know, if you, if you, how it pays off. And it was like a, a competition between me and the balloon to like <laughs> make it the bigger I, I can. Yeah. I, it, was, it was great. Yeah. I like these things like breathing and try to stay very conscious about uh, my body and my breathing and or like the class we did before of uh, handstand. It's just like trying to perceive that little movement and that little muscles that are uh, diving, uh, doing things that normally we don't think about. <laughs>